hello, hello, beautiful and amazing people. How are you this sunny and warm day? Or at least that for you is also a sunny and a beautiful day. Now, I hope that you are also ready to code with me. So far, you should be proud of yourself because you managed to do a lot, a lot of challenges for free code camp but now we will also continue with the responsive web designs principles before we get started with this chapter i would like to remind you to please like share with your friends this video and also subscribe to my youtube channel for those of you who are new here uh, i would like to introduce myself my name is eleftheria nice to meet you all and i am a front-end developer some of these challenges from free code camp i've already done them but i think that i want to refresh my memory and like recapping thing is always a good way to stay up in your game so let's try to do this thing today this chapter has only four challenges it shouldn't take us too long but you know sit comfy relax and let's start coding together first challenge says create a media query so let's read a little bit about creating media queries Media queries are a new technique introduced in CSS3 that change the presentation of content based on different viewport sizes. The viewport is a user's visible area of web page and is different depending on the device used to access the site. This means that for us this area is our view and I can change that by scrolling it left or right. Media queries consist of a media type and if that media type matches the type of device the document is displayed on, the styles are applied. You can have as many selectors and styles inside your media query as you want. And then we have two examples. Uh, it says that the media query returns the content when the device's width is less than or equal to 100 pixels. So we have media, then max width and 100 pixels. Inside here you will have your CSS rules. And then there is another thing that says following media query returns the content when the device's height is more than or equal to 350. So the first case is less than and we are using the max. And the other case is more than and we are using the mean height. So I know some people get confused by less but we are writing here max and then here is more but we are writing here mean so just be careful with that we have the maximum volume and the minimum volume let's see what we have to do so first challenge says add a media query so that the pay tag has a font size of 10 pixels when the device's height is less than or equal to 800 pixels all right, so for the first challenge, I'm going to copy this line, going here to the comment, and I will do that as a max height, not width, okay. And I will change the 100 to 800. And then inside here, I will delete the comment, and let's read one more time what I should have. It's a, like paragraph with font size of 10 pixels. And now I think that we are good to go. I can see the result. So let's go to the next one. Make an image responsive. That should be interesting. Making images responsive with CSS is actually very simple. Instead of applying an absolute width to an element, like so, image with 720 pixels, we can use something like this with image, max width of 100%, display block, which trust me, this is important, and height to other. So I'm going to copy that and read the challenge. Uh, oh, first we have this paragraph right here that says max width property of 100% scales the image to fit the width of the container, like 
so, but the image won't stretch wider than its original width. So setting the display property to block changes the image from an inline element, which is the default one, to a block element on its own line. The height property of auto keeps the original aspect ratio of the image. The challenge says add style rules for the image tag to make it responsive to the size of its container. It should display as block level element, it should fit the full width of its container without stretching and it should keep its original aspect ratio. Okay, so this is an example and I honestly don't think that we have to change a lot of things. It says mat width 100% display block and hide auto that should be correct but of course let's check it it is correct and we can move on safely next challenge says use a retina image for higher resolution displays the simplest way to make your images appear retina and optimize them for retina displays is to define their width and height values as only half of what the original file is. Okay, you didn't know about that. So we have an example that says style image, it has some height and width, but the image, like we have the source, alt, a most excellent picture. Set the width and the height of the image tag to half of the original values. In this case, both the original height and the original width are 200 pixels. Okay, I'm going to copy this line and then I'm going inside the style. It says 200 pixels, so I will do that as 100. And then I don't think that I should change anything else. And we are correct and good to go. This is actually our last challenge, so read, let's read it carefully. It says make typography responsive. And typography is another thing that I really like. I work also as a UX and a UI designer, so I know that typography is something really, really important among the developers and the designers. Let's through this thing all together. So instead of using EM or pixels to size text, you can use viewport units for responsive typography. Viewport units like percentages are relative units, but they are based off different items. Viewport units are relative to the viewport dimensions, width or height of a device, and percentages are relative to the size of the parent container element. The four different viewport units are VW, which is for viewport width, then V8, which is for viewport height, V mean, which is for viewport smaller dimension, so we have height vs width versus width, and last but not least we have the V max, which stands for viewport bigger dimension, and again this is height versus width. Okay, I think that if we do the example, we will understand this a little bit better. Set the width of the H2 or the header 2 tag to 80% of the viewport's width and the width of the paragraph, so we have header 2 and paragraph, as 75% of the viewport's smaller dimension. Okay, let's write this thing down. We will start with the header and then we need the width. It says 80% of the vertical width of the viewport width, okay, and then we should also take the paragraph, and this time for the paragraph I think it's a 75, okay, so again with 75 the mean, okay, let's check this thing all together and see if we are correct. Now head to, to VW. Okay, what did I write wrong? Oh my god, no, we don't want the percentage. Never do that again. <laughs> okay, cool. I think that now we are correct. Let's check it one more time. And yes, we are correct. And you guys, that was our last 
challenge about the responsive web design principles. I hope that you enjoyed that video. I know that it was smaller in duration than the rest of the like the other challenges that we did for Freecon Camp. But uh, let me tell you one thing that I've already have the solutions for Flexbox challenges and also some other things. I have already uploaded this video into my YouTube channel and in the description box you will find all the links that you may need. Again, if you have any question, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. And as always, I would like to remind you to like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I hope that you are all are having an amazing day and see you really soon in another video. Bye!